Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and the price of XRP is climbing. Don't mind seeing that one tiny little baby boo bit. XRP was substantially lower just several days ago. And in fact, before I forget this, I wanted to just bring up this point, which I do from time to time. If you can look at your screen, I know you don't normally need to uh, for this channel. Most people will treat it like a podcast, which is what I do with most of the crypto YouTubers I listen to. Also, uh, listen, do a lot of listening when I'm walking the dog or at the gym or what have you, cleaning around the home. But uh, if you can look at your screen, if you're not driving, uh, consider doing so. Because if you throw out, I'm going to scroll through the top 50 cryptocurrencies, and if you take out... Uh, the stable coins like Tether and USDC, I want to point out that almost every single chart looks virtually identical. Not literally identical, but very, very strikingly close. So as I scroll through, just look to the right where I'm, I'm moving my mouse around here. Just look at this as I scroll down. Look at all these charts. Very samey, samey. yes? And that's why when you ask, like... Um, the, the cryptocurrency that I purchased, is it going to be a winner this market cycle? Uh, well, look, to be clear, I don't have a financial background and I'm not offering financial advice, to be clear. And you definitely shouldn't buy or sell because of anything I say, right? But I believe the answer to that question is yes. If, if it's if, Look, if this market cycle is going to be anything like the last market cycle, every single mid and large cap coin went parabolic at some point. There were zero exceptions to that. And my understanding is that the vast majority, if not all, small cap coins did the same. So if there are some exceptions, there could be some, maybe I'm just unaware of uh, outliers. But the market moved together. And so you're sitting here thinking, okay, XRP, well, what's it going to do? Is it going to have a run to its all-time high and beyond? I firmly believe that the answer is yes, very firmly. And I don't know how high it's going to get, but based on how high Bitcoin's already gotten this market cycle and Ethereum, I'd be kind of surprised if we didn't see at least $10 XRP, but I admit I don't know for sure, of course. But the whole market is moving in tandem. When If fundamentals sufficiently mattered and people were, were judging each of these coins on their actual merits, you would not see every single chart, almost literally, look the same. You just would not see that. Uh, now, as I record this, XRP is at $0.60, cents, Bitcoin's at $34,256, woo -woo, leading the market. That's what I want to see, Bitcoin running up eventually, all in good time. The altcoins will follow. Market cap for the asset class, $1.41 trillion, and Bitcoin dominance at 45.42%. Now, XRP, just within the last several days or so, I mean, it was as low as, what, $0.52 cents roughly? So seeing it above $0.60 cents looks good, and I just have a feeling that the, the, the bears out there they're going to have a bad time. Uh, here's a tweet from my fellow XRP YouTuber, the Blockchain Backer, from just a, a bit earlier today. He wrote, We've got a lot of work to do, but we have to start somewhere. Let's get through the first 702 FIB at $34,500. And here's the chart that he shared with that. And so as, as far as having a lot of work to do, Maybe you do, but I don't. <laughs> I'm going to do absolutely nothing. I'm going to let everybody else uh, be ridiculous and FOMO in and panic sell. And I'm counting on all of those people out there who I uh, somewhat jokingly say are, are useful idiots. <laughs> I'm just having a little fun with it. I'm not trying to be mean about it, but I mean, they just the, the, the decisions, they're so emotionally based from my perspective and so illogical that it's stupid. S-T-O-O-P-I-D, stupid to make buying and selling decisions like that. So just going with the flow, going with the trends, uh -uh. going against, against the grain, uh, data shows that's a much better move here. But but anyway, the, the point of the blockchain backer is not not lost on me. I appreciate his analysis. So yeah, the uh, level to watch for $34,500. Um, and he's not the only one that's, uh, that's talking about levels, at least in the wheelhouse of that. And so I've got actually uh, towards the end of the video, I'm going to cover with you something from... Uh, uh, Michael Vandepop, uh, Daily Hoddle, had a, an article about some stuff that he had to say. Um, and which is important, again, because Bitcoin does lead the market. I firmly believe XRP will follow, but look at, I started the video off the way I did for a reason. The market moves in tandem. All this legal stuff with the SEC going after Ripple, I just don't believe it's going to matter at all. Like, I still believe, even if we don't have clarity, I feel very strongly that XRP is still going to rally. Because it's a cryptocurrency in the crypto space. And only a small percentage of trading occurs within the United States. And it's not like all the trading in the United States stopped. There are still a few exchanges that allow it. And so a lot of the, the volume, fine, it's gone because a lot of exchange, exchanges halted. But a lot of that volume actually still did go to, to those other platforms. And good for them. Uh, making money on the buying and selling of XRP. They're, they've made a bold move. I respect it. 
Um, and so uh, here's a tweet uh, to, to, to Credible Crypto from somebody named Irish Shard Crypto who wrote the following. How's XRP looking to you? Question two for you. What price do you think XRP would be right now if it wasn't for the lawsuit? And so Credible Crypto wrote, XRP looks great. <laughs> Just like, despite what the bears would have, have you believe. Uh, XRP again, moving with the market. Okay, if the SEC going after Ripple claiming XRP is an unregistered security, if that doesn't kill XRP and send it to zero, you tell me what will. You tell me. I don't think it's happening, my friends. And so Credible Crypto wrote, XRP looks great and hard to say, but probs above new all-time high. So uh, Credible Crypto uh, is, is speculating that perhaps XRP would be today above its all-time high if not for what's happened with the SEC. And that's perfectly possible. I don't know. It's fun to speculate about this stuff. I, I don't know. Uh, it's within the realm of possibility. It's definitely a plausible concept. But uh, either way, even so even if it's delayed at this point, I still believe XRP will hit its all-time high. But I do remember after the, the bomb dropped, SEC went after Ripple towards the tail end of the year. At some point, XRP, uh, I, I know it ultimately got down like 17 cents. And I remember the blockchain backer saying, you know, guys, uh, if you're talking about... Um, where I would have expected XRP to be at so and so point in time, it was at some point a little bit after that uh, you know the S word hit the fan. Uh, he, he was saying without uh, without this interference from the SEC at that point in time, he was expecting XRP to hit two dollars and thirty five cents. And so we haven't even hit that this year. We did see XRP at about two dollars in April, sure, which is awesome by the way. Just further proof that XRP is moving with the market, which is what we want to see. But uh, but yeah, even that was below what, what uh, the blockchain backer was saying. Would have he probably would have expected outside of this. So are we seeing XRP price suppress today? Certainly, certainly a plausible concept. It, it could be the case. But I still want to argue, even if so, it's not going to stop money from uh, cycling through the crypto space because that's all that's happening here. When everything went parabolic last market cycle, it was not about fundamentals. It was about money cycling through, going to coins that had not yet gone parabolic, which is why everything eventually did go parabolic. And so the people in the know, they had their traps set. They invested in coins that hadn't popped yet. And when other coins popped off that they didn't own, they didn't go rush into them. The people that are savvy don't do that. The people that are savvy, they understand that they're not going to catch the parabolic action of every single coin, and they don't experience the, the emotion of fear of missing out just because that's the case. What they do instead is they're adults, and they sit there, and they're emotionless, and they wait for their turn when the, the coins that they invested in ultimately go up. That's it. And so I see humans behaving again this market cycle the same as they did last time. Why would you expect a different outcome? And so th th these are my expectations. We'll see what happens, but that, that is what I strongly believe in a general sense will be occurring here. And so again, to, I want to say it again, not financial advice, but I do like talking about this stuff and sharing my opinion. And I also love hearing what uh, what all of you, you think as well. Uh, there is no perfect answer. It's 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 a little bit of guesswork, fine, uh, but it's fun to think through. And I just, I still strongly believe if you just draw upon data, draw upon like what has happened in the past, I think that that's a better way to approach the crypto markets. I really strongly believe that. Uh, here's a tweet from Kaleo, chart analyst. He wrote, in February, from where the price of Bitcoin is now, it only took one week for it to hit $47,000. So think about that. It went up somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 grand in a week. And then he wrote, obviously that doesn't mean it'll happen that fast again. Just don't forget that it can. And so even if you feel down, this is what the dark is like the markets test you. They really test you. And that's why I always tell people like you are the biggest impediment to, uh, to acquiring substantial wealth in crypto. Because if, if, if you can't control your emotions, you're like, good luck. You're going you're gonna to have a bad time, my friend. But, but things do happen fast in crypto. So even if you're at a point right now, um, it, it doesn't mean you're like actually weak or stupid or bad. I have a little fun saying useful idiots, this and that. But look, it doesn't mean you're actually weak or stupid. Uh, it just makes you normal, but you still need to be aware that this is what the, the markets like. This is how the markets make people feel, and you have to ask yourself: Since I'm feeling this, is this good justification? Feeling this emotion, is this good sufficient justification to buy or sell anything? And for me, the answer is no. If it's an emotion, the answer 100% of the time is no. 100% of the time, uh, if I'm going to buy or sell anything, it's going to be based on uh, you know logic, data, facts, targets, anything like that would be fine. But uh, for me, no, definitely not emotions. And so even if you're kind of sick of things and we've been moving sideways for a while and the price is way down from a couple months ago, I get it. 
But don't forget, like things can happen fast. And if you if you really think that uh, we're never going to have a market, in, which is an ex it's an extreme fear right now. If you never think it's going to enter extreme greed, okay, fine. Then we've got reason to feel down. If you really genuinely believe that, but I don't. I think this market is going to hit extreme uh, extreme greed again. I just don't know exactly when. But we're probably through the worst of this uh, corrective slash sideways movement. That would be my guess at this point. My best guess just for fun. Uh, here's a, ch a, a tweet from chart analyst Peter Brandt. And he wrote the following. U.S. stock market, a health checkup. S&P, new all-time high weekly close. NASDAQ, new all-time weekly close. Dow Jones Industrial Average, new all-time weekly close. And so why am I highlighting this? Well, I just wanted to bring up one simple point, which is that uh, the crypto, the crypto markets follow the stock market. There is a strong correlation. I've talked about this on that on the, the, this, this channel before a number of times, and all of all of these other indicators look fantastic. They really do. So that bubble is inflating. I do believe a bubble's inflating there. Uh, slower. It's not the same as in crypto, obviously. So who knows when it would pop? It could be years for all I know. I, I don't pretend to know, but it looks to me like it's inflating. And so, anyway, as long as we're heading up. I wouldn't anticipate uh, that that crypto is going to pop, you know, if, if that market's heading up. Now, that doesn't mean that if uh, if, if the stock market's going to go up for, say, several more years, I'm just making that up. It doesn't mean that crypto will move with it 100% of the time. It doesn't mean that uh, a Bitcoin bubble can't form faster and ultimately pop. No, it can, and it has in the past. I'm just saying if you zoom out on the chart, yes, it correlates. And we saw that most famously at this point, I'd say, in March of last year, 2020, when the pandemic hit, stocks tanked. Uh, crypto followed and Bitcoin led the fall. It, it just did. But uh, but yeah, so the, the fact that this is going up, I just want to say it's, it's another good indicator. But yes, at some point, the crypto bubble will fully inflate and it will pop and it will deflate. And uh, I'm, I'm here for that. Though. I, I'm here for the ride to the top. And I'm not worried about selling the top, but I'm going to sell on the way to the top. And if I accidentally overshoot, I hope not. But if I do, then I'll sell a bit on the way back down, hopefully before it crashes much. And that will be fine. That'll be perfectly fine. That's all I can really ask of myself. I'm not going to beat myself up for not hitting the top. I'm not even trying to hit the top. That's an unrealistic expectation. All right, here's an article from the Daily Hop. Bitcoin bulls must hold key price level this weekend or bullish momentum will be lost, according to top crypto analyst. A top crypto analyst trader Michael Vandepop is discussing key Bitcoin price levels as the flagship cryptocurrency consolidates above $33,000. In a new video, Vandepop says that although Bitcoin appears to be in a slight bullish period, especially in the wake of news that Tesla and SpaceX hold Bitcoin on their balance sheets, the asset needs to flip some key levels into support to, to sustain its rally. And here's a quote. What you want to see is that Bitcoin generates a new higher low. At this stage, yes, we do have this fake out beneath the recent low. We got back into the range. But in order to sustain bullish, you want to see the previous support flip for support again, which would be $31,000. And so then the piece continues. Right now, says Vandepop, Bitcoin has stayed above support at $29,300 and even managed to break out of a falling wedge, which is a pattern that can indicate trend reversal. Vandepop highlights that if Bitcoin fails to flip $31,000 into support, he's looking at a leg down to $26,000 and possibly to $24,000. Uh, the analyst, however, says many traders are waiting for Bitcoin to plummet and have reached a moment of bearish euphoria, which could set up a major bear trap and ignite a sustained Bitcoin bounce. And here's the quote. If we break 32,800, I would not be surprised if we get a very swift and heavy run towards $36,000. Uh, and he says ultimately perhaps as high as, as, high as 37,500. And so look, what he's doing here is acknowledging, okay, Maybe possible that Bitcoin could go as low as that twenty-four, twenty-six thousand dollar level. That's not what he thinks is probable, though. I've been following him uh, just about daily for some time. Uh, he doesn't think that's what what's likely. What we're talking about here is probability of outcomes, but acknowledging all potential outcomes that he sees as potentially possible. That's it. And so I really do think that the, the bears out there they're going to have a bad time. They're waiting to buy at those levels. Some of them even lower, and. It could happen, but I don't think it's probable. I think what's more probable is that you're going to see a continuation to, up to the upside, and that is what 
Uh, pretty well, all of the analysts that I respect and follow tend to think that many of them acknowledge, okay, yeah, fine, could go to the downside. They don't think that's po probable. And so hopefully there's there's strength in the wisdom of so many. I hope that's the case. Uh, but even if, if their analysis correct is correct and it makes all the logical sense in the world to suspect that's what's most likely to occur, that, again, doesn't mean that it will, just because it's problem. And so then even if it does crash down further, if you look back and dissect it, it doesn't mean that they'll find anything wrong with their analysis. They'd probably still be like, no, that's what made sense at the time, because, again, we're talking about probabilities. So even if you go back to dissect your decision, unless you actually found you made a mistake, most of these analysts would just say, okay, well, it didn't go the way that I thought was likely, but my logic was still sound. Like that, That's what you'll find a lot of the time while they'll, they'll acknowledge, okay, yes, that's not what happened, but so what? You're not going, whatever you think is probable, it's not going to happen 100% of the time. And so these analysts, they're human. They are not from the future. They, they don't have crystal balls. And so it, it's, not a, it's not about uh, making some sort of firm prediction and that's that. Uh, that that is not how this works, but but still, with me understanding exactly what technical analysis is, even though I'm not a chart analyst myself, I find value, and I think this is useful, and it's fun to stay apprised of what's actually going on in the space in terms of directionally where price is going, and for and the reason I think it's important for people that aren't me because I'm like a robot basically when it comes to price moving up and down. I think it's very important for most other people. Because most people do have trouble with the emotional side of all of this when you've got your real money invested in something and, and if it goes down. Well, I, I just, I really strongly believe that if you're aware of potential downside outcomes and you get the bigger picture of things, then you'll be less likely to make an emotional buying or selling decision. That's the reason I find this to be so useful. But um, I will go ahead and wrap up there. You guys let me know what you think below. Tell, let's take the temperature of the room. How are you feeling? You guys feeling bullish? You feel embarrassed? Drop a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.